This video is sponsored by Morning Brew. I bought eight broken Xbox Series X controllers from eBay to see if I can fix them. So now let's get them unboxed and see what I got. There we go. We've got all sorts of issues on these. I can already tell just by unboxing them. Let's take a look at each one and see what's wrong. Look at that balance. People think YouTubers have an easy job. <laughs> all right, well, if they weren't broken before, they are now. <laughs> Apparently, I bought this blue controller from a fan of the channel, so thanks, MJ. We'll save it till last. Let's start with some of the black ones. So here's all eight of the controllers. I can already see a couple of them have thumbstick issues. Who knows if that's the only issue? But let's start with this black controller. I'm going to plug it into a gamepad tester and see what issues we find. And we're starting off great controller one, number one. I see no problems with at all. I will get an Xbox Series X up here and connect it to this controller to test a few other things, but so far we're starting out great. Let's move on to controller number two. And controller number two is one with a broken thumbstick, so I'll have to take that apart to see what's going on there. But I do want to test all the other buttons while I'm at it. Now controller number three. Controller number three has a whole bunch of sticky buttons, all the ABXY, also the bumpers and triggers are all sticky. So that's gonna require me to take it apart and probably do a whole lot of cleaning. Luckily, it doesn't look like there's any other damage. It's probably had something spilled on it and hopefully it is completely fixable. But we'll find that out once we get it taken apart. Let's move on to number four. So we'll have to test this with the console as well. Now it's time for number five. And number five is another one that has a broken thumbstick, but we'll test all the rest of it just so we know if there's any other issues. Okay, that's the only issue I see so far. Let's move on to number six. And number six, I also see no problems. So I'll test this with the console. Let's move on to number seven. And pretty much the exact same thing on number seven. Let's check number eight. Okay, and there we go. We finally got some verifiable stick drift on number eight. And the right stick drift is the only problem I see on number eight. Now that I've got an idea of what's wrong with some of these, it's time to get them apart. But before I do that, I want to tell you about today's sponsor, Morning Brew. Morning Brew is a free Monday through Sunday daily newsletter. Before I subscribed to Morning Brew, I would spend too much time just randomly scrolling my phone, looking at whatever news stories came up. But Morning Brew gets me up to speed on business news in just five minutes. It's not like the dry, dense, and boring news that you're used to. Morning Brew is witty, relevant, and informative. Morning is how I love to keep up with business news and just today I learned about how fast consumer prices are rising and also Domino's Pizza is now delivering pizzas without even having a driver. There's absolutely no reason not to subscribe to Morning Brew if you're into business, finance, or tech. It's completely free, takes less than 15 seconds, and you can go down to the description right now and sign up today. Morning Brew is my favorite way to get my news and I think you're gonna love it too. Now let's get back to fixing these Xbox Series X controllers. Since we haven't found any problems with number one yet we're going to start with number two that has this broken right stick it's also got a piece rattling around in there so let's find out what that is And here's the piece rattling around right there. We've also got a plastic piece stuck right here. There we go. These pieces are part of this thumbstick cap. So you can see where the broken part is. It's got this piece that protrudes this round piece. And that's just been totally destroyed out of this thumbstick. Now with that thumbstick out though, we need to see if there's been any permanent damage to the analog stick itself. 
By the way, I did have some questions. When the analog stick is stuck over like that, is that normal? And yes, it is. That's totally normal. Happens in every direction. Ooh, we might have a little problem there. Feels like maybe there's something stuck inside there. Anyways, that's totally normal. Once you put the thumbsticks back on and then get this top piece on, then they can't do that anymore. So there's definitely a problem in here. It gets stuck right there. So we need to figure out why. So when it goes up, it's nice and smooth. When it goes down, you can hear it's just hitting against something and just like grinding against it. I'm not sure what's going on in there. I'm not sure whether something's fallen in there or whether it's just been damaged. By the look of this thumb cap that's broken, I mean, something's probably damaged in there because somebody was really hard on it. I was hoping to not have to replace this, but I just might have to. So I think what I'm gonna do now is remove this from the board, then I'll take it apart so we can see exactly what's going on with it, then we'll put a new one in. I'll be using this Hako 808 desoldering gun. It's basically got a vacuum pump built in and this tip gets very hot. So I'll melt the solder with the tip, then press the button and it'll suck the wet solder up into the vacuum gun. So I've removed this small board from the rest of the controller and I've desoldered all of the mounting pins on this analog stick. So now we just need to pull it off the board and then we'll take it apart and see what exactly is going on with it. So now we just need to get this piece apart and this, I'm not doing this in order to try and fix this analog stick. I'm doing this so we can figure out what exactly went wrong and then I will install a new one. But I am curious on this one. This is actually good that I'm replacing it. You can see there's a crack all the way through it. So it's a good thing I didn't try to just put this one back together and test it because it definitely does need to be totally replaced. Wow, this is definitely not coming apart. Oh, I thought it would, it's just kind of coming apart in pieces because it's just all busted up. Now this little piece right here might have broken off of that, but it also could have been inside here. Probably not going to be any way that we're going to actually figure out what exactly was causing that problem on it. But it still could be interesting to see the inside of this thing. And there we have it. That is what the very inside of the analog stick looks like. And you can actually now see what the problem with it was. If you look on this side, this piece is just kind of sitting down inside there, kind of flush with this white piece right here. This one is sticking out and that's because it's broken. There we go. That was the cause of our problem. So I'm glad we could figure out the exact cause of this problem. That's always fun. But now it's time to get this one fixed and I'm gonna do that by installing a new analog stick. Then we'll put it back together and test it. Also, this is why you need to be careful with your thumbsticks. This soldering looks decent, definitely could be better, but I think that's gonna work. Let's check the analog stick. Okay, I think that's gonna work pretty well. Now I'm gonna get it put back together so we can test it. Now I still do need to get this thumbstick. I don't have an extra one of these right now, but I know this one's good. So I'm gonna test this one and make sure that's good. Then we'll move on to the next controller, assuming that it works. So let's check that now. Okay, show us some good news. Okay, the left stick and the right stick. 
and that is great news. Controller number two is fully fixed. Now let's move on to controller number three, the one with the sticky buttons. So basically all of these buttons are super sticky. I'm a little afraid about what I'm gonna find inside this one, but let's take it apart and see how bad it is. Okay, that's pretty gross. I've definitely seen worse. Yeah, all of this is just super sticky. This is gonna be a long clean because there's just so much of it. I'm gonna get it apart the rest of the way and check out the board on it and see how bad that is. <laughs> That's just sticky even pulling it up. Okay, I got some sticky stuff on here, which I expect. Let's check this side. Okay. I feel like everything I look at is not as bad as I expect so far at least, but we know the buttons are sticky, so we need to remove this board and this lower board as well. So now we have all the screws out. Let's get this board out of here. I need to remove this. I always forget about this piece. Now we can get this board out much easier. Yep, the entire button pad just sticks right to the board. Okay, definitely need some cleaning. Not as bad as I thought it would be so far. I mean, that's definitely pretty sticky. You can see when I get it in the right light, there's just parts of stickiness all over this board. Now all the buttons, these are definitely very sticky. It doesn't take much on these because there's not a lot of clearance between the side of the button and the side of the shell. So if that gets sticky there, it's gonna just cause major problems. Okay, and here we go. This is kind of the base shell of the controller. This is gonna be almost like a total controller rebuild, except for just total controller cleaning. So I'm gonna go through with Q-tips and just clean all of the stickiness off of this. Then I'll put each piece back in one by one as I clean them. And by the time we're done, we should have a nice clean controller. I'm gonna be using Q-tips and isopropyl alcohol for this. Some of the stuff that's really sticky, I'm gonna go through and just soak it in the IPA. And then when I come back to wipe it off, it'll kind of soften the sticky stuff. And that'll just make it come off a lot easier. And I guess it's time for you to sit back and enjoy a cleaning montage. And after about an hour's worth of cleaning and 3,767 Q-tips later, this Series X controller is all nice and clean, so now I'm gonna get it back together and then test it and see if it works.
Okay, and how do the buttons feel now? Oh, nice and crispy. That's what it should feel like. Even though it doesn't look any different on the outside, it is working great on the inside now. But we still need to test the buttons on the gamepad tester, so let's check that out. And now all of these buttons are working great, so number three is fixed. Number four has no problems that I could find so far, so let's move on to number five. Here we are with number five. We get another broken right thumbstick. Let's see if this one has the same problem as number two. That's probably not ideal. Let's see what all the broken pieces are in this one. Okay, so this piece came out already. So it looks like we got the same problem. That piece has been broken out of the inside of this thumbstick, but let's check and see how the analog stick is that's mounted on the board. Oh, here's the other piece. But is the analog stick broken? Oh, maybe not. This one actually looks and feels really good. And just looking at it under here, I don't see any cracked or broken pieces. So I think this analog stick is fine. So this one's just gonna need this thumbstick. And like I said before, I don't have any replacements for those, but once I do, that's just a matter of plugging it right in and then putting it back together. So number five was an easy fix. Let's move on to number eight as number six and seven. Also, I've found no problems with so far. And for number eight, this right stick is drifting. So I'm gonna get it apart. First, I'm gonna try cleaning it. And if that fixes it, we'll call it good. If not, we'll have to repair the analog stick. And this one has been taken apart before. Let's see if anything on the inside has been messed with. Let's see what MJ tried to do with this one. So this is the analog stick that's causing the problem. You guys have seen me use this BW100 electronic contact cleaner. This video is not sponsored by them, but I do like to use it because it is pressurized and with the straw, I can just get right down into where it needs to go to clean these analog stick potentiometers. And now with it clean, let's plug it in and see if that fixed it. And as you can see here, that definitely didn't fix it. So we're gonna need to at least replace the potentiometer. So let's get doing that next. And hopefully that's all we need to do on this one. So this analog stick drifts up. So that means this potentiometer right here is gonna be the one that deals with the up and down axis. So that's the one we're gonna to need to replace. I just like to mark it just so I don't get confused when I'm actually in there doing the repair. I'm gonna get these joints right here desoldered. Then I'll remove this board so we can get easier access to this potentiometer. Then I'll put the new one in and resolder the joints. Okay, and let's see if we can figure out why we couldn't fix this one just with cleaning. And I don't know how well it shows on camera, but right here, this contact and this contact, actually all the contacts are just plain worn out. So now it's time to install a new potentiometer. I'm just gonna steal the potentiometer off of this analog stick. That way, instead of replacing the whole analog stick, I can get two repairs out of one of these because I can use this potentiometer for one repair and I've already used this one for another repair. There's a little clip right here and a little clip right here. And there we go. So now I'm gonna slip this analog stick in those holes. There we go. Then I need to make sure it connects with this little white piece down in here. And there we go. Now I just need to solder those three pins on down there and we'll be ready to test it. And there we go. That looks about like the perfect amount of solder. Now let's put it back together. So we got all back together. Let's give it a test. There we go, that's what I'm talking about. Number eight is working great. The thumbstick is completely fixed. All the other buttons are working. 
So now let's check out the other controllers that showed no problems when we tested it without the console. Let's plug them into a console and test them all and see if there's any problems with those. So the only problem I found with all of those controllers is controller number one has a faulty A button. When I was testing it the first time, I missed that it's not showing up when I press A. So let's get number one taken apart and see what's going on with that one. So this bottom button right here is the one we're looking at. There's no problem with the button itself that I see. I don't see any problem with the button pad itself. That all seems fine. So then we're left with the board. And this would be the A button right down here. I don't immediately see any problems with it. One of the tests I wanna do before we get too carried away is just jump the two sides of this button pad on the board and see if that will make it show up on the screen right here. I'm just gonna be using a metal pick to try and jump those two sides and connect them and see if that will make it register up on the screen. Okay, and I think if you look carefully, this one right here, there we go. Okay, so that shows when those two sides are connected that it does actually show up. So we gotta figure out why it's showing up with my metal pick, but it's not showing up when you use the button pad. The first thing I'm gonna do is actually just try cleaning it. Maybe there's some sort of residue that got on the contacts and that's causing the problem, but that's what I'm gonna try first and see if that'll fix it. So I'm just gonna use some isopropyl alcohol, clean those contacts up. Now this is how the button pads go. Hey, there we go. And it's working. Did it really just need a little bit of cleaning? I'm gonna get it put back together and let's see if it'll work. Okay, and here we go. B, Y, X, and A. Yeah! So number one is now fixed. If you like this video, you'll probably like the video where I bought a bunch of PS5 DualSense controllers and basically did the same thing, tried to fix them. If you'd like to see that video, I'll put a link up on your screen now so you can come hang out with me and see if I can fix those ones. Thank you to Morning Brew for sponsoring this video. Once again, I'll put a link down in the description if you'd like to subscribe to Morning Brew. So all of these eight Xbox Series X controllers either didn't have a problem or are now fixed. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a good one.